Okay, welcome to today's session. Um, in the last session, um, here is the link to the uh, last session in YouTube. We discussed um, Alan Turing's conception of artificial intelligence, the question of whether they are intelligent machines. And in today's session, we will first um, give a short, um, a short discussion of his, a short summary of his um, theory, of Turing's theory, and then we will proceed to um, the position of today's session, namely um, John Searle and his very famous chapter on Can Computer Think in his 1984 book, Minds, Brains, and Science. And I think, Arno, that you wanted to say something about the relationship between Turing and Searle and also John von Neumann. Uh, so I hand over to you. Okay. Hello also from my side. Nice to see you again. Um, I don't want to say too many things about John Searle's um, so-called Chinese room argument and the relation of it to uh, the argument of, of Turing in respect to the imitation game or how it is later called Turing test. Because this is what we will do today and together um, to think about and to discuss in what way these two texts relate to each other. Um, that's why I prepared a kind of side remark, a little bit an insight into the background um, of what we do today, because it's it's kind of interesting that on the one side, if you read these two texts as we do, directly in confrontation to each other in a seminar one week after the other, it seems to be totally clear that these two texts di uh, are directly relating to each other. But at the same time, it seems to be obvious that, um, that Searle doesn't refer to Turing. He doesn't mention the name in the whole book. And at the same time, one focus of the text of Searle seems to be a little bit strange if you have directly Turing's text in mind. What I mean is, or what I, what I try to allude to is uh, the analogy of mind and brain, of, or not mind and brain, brain and computer, excuse me for that. So, in, in, in focus of John Searle's critical discussion of AI research is the analogy of um, the brain, the human brain primarily, and the digital computer. He's directly attacking this kind of analogy. But it is, as far as I see, not at all a focus of, um, of Turing, this kind of analogy. It is rather possible to argue that this kind of analogy contradicts a little bit to Turing's text, although at the same time, it seems to be rather clear that the soul is also criticizing Turing. So the relation between these two texts is a little bit more complicated than two guys discussing directly with each other. And I think a reason for that is yeah, that something happened, let's say. The text of um, Alan Turing is from 1950 that we discussed last, last week. And John Searle's text is from the 80s. So there are 30 years in between. And for sure, Turing is still very important for AI research um, in the meantime. But at the same time, a lot of things happened in this evo evolving research field. And I think one of the points that evolved after Turing's text is this analogy of brain and computer, in which, in a way, Turing's argument reappears and Turing tests reappears and, and they play a role. Turing is still relevant and important for this whole discussion, but the framework changed a little bit. And that's, I want, that's why I wanted to introduce uh, another guy, and very important for the development of computers, the development of computer science, and the development of AI research. And this guy is John von Neumann. Um, <clears throat> John von Neumann also died very, well, rather young, he died in 1957. But one year after his death, um, an essay appeared, uh, published by um, his 
wife, Clara von Neumann. Um, and this uh, essay is not really finished. It's um, published out of the manuscript in a way, a non-finished manuscript. And in this book published 1958, um, it is exactly the focus in what way we can compare the computer, the digital computer, analog computers, and the human brain. So in focus here is the comparison, no? the analogy or the direct comparison between computer and the brain. So what von Neumann does in this book is first, he describes computers, analog computers and digital computers. Then he discusses the brain as far as he understands it. He is not an expert in this science, but he knows many things about it. And he tries to elaborate in a rather differentiated and nuanced way in what way we can compare um, the brain with the computer. And one, one argument which evolves in this text, I have the impression, is that he tries to argue that for sure the hardware or the wetware of the brain and the computer, if analog or, or digital, these are rather different. But he tries to focus something like a convergence of the computer and the brain in respect to the functionality of these two machines. Yeah? So he seems to, to eye something like what the brain can can be at least approximately, approximately computed by a digital computer. And what a computer can, can at least approximately computed or um, processed by a human brain. So, and in this context, especially the Turing machine appears. So the Turing machine and a lot of different parts of Turing now are framed by this kind of analogy between the computer and the brain and the question in what way their functionality can be compared or in what way their functionality approximates each other or converge in a way. And I think this is just one indicator for, for a kind of thought, for a kind of research program that developed possibly after Turing and not really in coherence with Turing's plans or intentions. And that um, is addressed by John Searle very critically. So we have to be aware when we today compare Turing, Turing's um, imitation game or the Turing test and, um, um, and the argument of, of, of John Searle in respect to the Chinese room, we have to be aware that there are a lot of things happening around and in between. Yeah? But nevertheless, I think it's, it totally makes sense to do what we are uh, up to do today. So that was a little bit my historical side remark. And I yeah. give over to Jörg. Many thanks, Arno, for your introduction and overview. I will now um, proceed with our key questions. As always, um, I will just read them. So first, how does Searle's account of AI relate to Turing? Arno has already said something about this relationship, which is really interesting. Then second, what does Searle mean by strong AI? You all know these terms, strong and weak AI, artificial intelligence. And there is an occurrence of strong AI in Searle's text, which is, in our opinion, really interesting. The third question is, by means of which arguments does Searle argue against the identification of mental processes and program processes? The fourth question, how does Searle's Chinese room argument work? Fifth question, why can't digital computers produce and deal with meaning, so semantic content, according to Searle? Sixth question, which is related to the fifth question, why is a digital computer, according to Searle, only able to simulate but not to duplicate mental states? So these are the six questions. And as already written in our last email, we would now like to build, to form small groups and to discuss these questions, these six questions first internally and then after say 15 minutes, we will gather um, uh, virtually 
and discuss these questions um, together.